Let me finish today with uh, some basic definitions of operators in Hilbert spaces. And again, you probably have seen this everywhere, but anyway, so let's assume that now we have two Hilbert spaces, X and Y. with uh, associated scalar product and norm derived from the scalar product. And uh, let's assume we have some operator A that maps, should I call it K? Yeah, we had K before. So we have an operator K that maps from X to Y. And uh, we'll assume that it's linear and continuous. Then uh, K has an adjoint. An adjoint, K star, that maps from Y to X. And uh, it has the property that for all X in X, and for a Y, a capital Y, we have that uh, the scalar product of um, A in K, X, and Y, and that's something that lies in Y, so that's the Y scalar product, is the same as X and K star Y for the X scalar product. Okay, and... Uh, K star is also linear and continuous. Now, um, let me give you a simple example. Um, I think I've prepared one, just to make sure that I don't do it in the wrong way. Yes. Let's uh, define our operator as above as we did up, up there, up there. So um, we take uh, u in, or we take x to be L2 of, uh, let me see, what was that? L2 of omega. We take y to be L2 of sigma. And we have u from L2 of uh, sigma times omega. K, excuse me, I've called it K. And I always forget about the exponent. And we take the definition from above. So for u in x, KU of Y is defined as the integral of omega K of, of X, excuse me, K of X and Y dy. So that's exactly the setting from above. So everything's properly defined. This is an operator from L2 of omega to L2 of sigma. Now, um, we take u in x and we take v in y and we find that uh, the scalar product of, um, what did I say, uh, ku and, y and uh, v. Now this is something that lies in y, so that should be the y scalar product, so that's L2 of sigma. This is defined as the integral of a sigma ku of uh, x um, ku of um, what did I take the the x was always in sigma here so this is ku of x v of x dx. And that completely makes sense, right? I mean, uh, x is uh, in sigma, and sigma 
was uh, L2 of sigma was the y. So um, this is the same as the integral over sigma, integral over omega, k of x and y, um, k of x and y, u of y, v of x, dy, dx. Now with the conditions above, everything's, everything is absolutely convergent. So I can change the order of integration here. So this is the same as the k of x and y, v of x, and I already put in the dx here, u of y, dy. And uh, now this is, if I define this to be k star v on y, then this k star is a function that maps from uh, v, so that's in, in y, or that's L2 of sigma. And out comes some function on, uh, on, on sigma, and then in fact, it's L2 of sigma. And what we have here now is nothing but integral over omega, k star v of y, u of y, dy. So this is nothing but the scalar product of, let me write it in the other way, u of k star v. And that's uh, the scalar product of omega. So that's in L2 of omega. Okay, so you can easily uh, see that this is actually in L2 over here using the same um, proof as we uh, as we did in the uh, in the last theorem. So we see that the k star, which I defined, satisfies the correct relation. K u v is the same as u k star v. So uh, we found the adjoint here for the integral operator. Okay, uh, and for many problems, we'll have to actually compute that uh, integral operator, that uh, adjoint operator, in particular for partial differential equations. Okay, so um, that was the adjoint. So uh, now let's look a little bit more closely at projection. And for that, I uh, now take Banach space x, uh, and Hilbert space x. Oops. That always happens, right? And um, um, yeah, what did I want to say here? Oh yeah, I take subset M. Should at least be convex, but uh, usually I believe that this is um, linear subspace. Okay, and uh, for the following, I will assume the second. It's a linear subset. Now, I think it's clear what the closure is. So that's, uh, that includes the limiting value of all Cauchy series in M. And uh, what I'm interested in is the orthogonal projection. So all x in x, for all x in x, there exists to uh, exist um, y in m uh, 
closure, closure of M, and Z, uh, which is perpendicular to uh, all elements of M. Oh, I didn't include <laughs> perp, right? Uh, let me let me add this below. And perp is the set of all Z which are perpendicular to uh, um, to um, Y for all Y and M. So uh, Z is uh, the orthogonal set of M. And now we have uh, um, um, a Y in the closure of M and a Z in M perp such that X can be written as Y plus Z. Uh, now, and that uh, of course only uh, applies to the linear subspace uh, if uh, M is actually a linear subspace of X. Um, you can easily show uh, that, um, so what I'm saying is that X is in fact, it can be written as the closure of M orthogonal sum with M perp. So this is the space X, make this clear. And uh, something you can easily show is M perp perp is the closure of M. Okay, um, how do you prove this? Well, um, Obviously, Y is uh, the projection of X onto the closure of M. So um, how can you compute Y well, using, of course, using uh, the uh, orthogonal projection? How can you define this? And so let's take X and X. And we define Y to be the arc min of all, well, how do I call this now? Y is gone. So let's do uh, Z I've also already used. So let's take all W in M, which um, closure of M, uh, which closest, which is closest to the given x. And of course, we want to use the Euclidean norm, the Hilbert space norm here. And I always like to add a square. OK, so uh, what we need to show is that uh, this minimum actually exists. So it's not an infimum, but it's really a minimum. There, so that is attained. And that uh, this w, which I have, is actually unique. Um, it's always the same way you do this. And, uh, and of course, you need to show that y is actually uh, perpendicular, uh, that, um, <laughs> that the z that then comes up, which is defined as x minus y, is also perpendicular to m. OK, so um, how can you prove this, that uh, this is actually well defined? Well, this is a standard. Um, was a standard procedure, standard proof taken from minimization or complex from uh, convex minimization. So this also works for convex M, uh, but we'll use that's why I wrote convex up there, but we'll use the linear subspace here. Okay, uh, let's alpha define as the infimum of the norm of x minus w for W in M. Let's M, take M, uh, M is fine. Now, uh, this is obviously bounded uh, from below. So um, this is well defined and it's not minus infinity. So uh, uh, since this is the infimum, we can 
find a sequence Wn with the property that the norm of x minus Wn converges to alpha. Huh? Should I take the square? Yeah, I think I don't need it here. Okay, um, now we look at the following. It could be any sequence uh, with, with that property. Now, uh, we'll use the parallelogram equation. So that's the following one. And that's for all vectors um, x and y, we have that the norm of x plus y squared plus the norm of x minus y squared is the two is twice the norm of x squared plus y squared. Right? I mean, that's that's general for all x and y whenever that norm is defined. So for all x and y and x. Okay, just to keep that in mind. Um, we want to use this and we want to use the right-hand side. So we already write down the two over here. And I will. Uh, I want to use the uh, fact that x minus omega n, uh, x minus w n converges towards alpha. So we look at this one x minus wn squared plus the norm of x minus wm squared. And um, what can I say about this? Well, of course, I want to show that uh, wn is actually a Cauchy sequence. So I want to show that omega n minus omega m and converges to zero. Now, uh, this one, obviously, for any for n to infinity, this one converges to alpha, and this one converges to alpha, so the whole thing converges to um, 4 times alpha square. That's already clear. Okay, now uh, we take this, and now we apply the, um, the parallelogram equation. So this is the same as the norm of x plus y. So that's x minus wn plus, uh, oops, uh, plus uh, x minus wm. And that's again two norm squared, right? Uh, leave out that two over here. Plus. Um, the difference between the two, so that's omega wm minus wn squared. Now that's very nice because now we already see this one over here. That's exactly what we need to show to converge towards zero uh, for m and n equal go, um, going to infinity um, to get the Cauchy sequence. So we need to show that this, this one converges to zero. Now we look at the other term. Uh, and we see we have two x and I'll take the two out. So due to the square, we have something like four times x minus, well, what we have here, that's wn plus wm over two because I've taken the two out here, right? Okay, now this one for uh, um, Wn is, um, is an element of M. Wm is also an element of M. So uh, if M is convex, then this is an element of M. Um, and, and in particular, that's true when M is a linear subspace. So since this is an M, we already know that the whole thing here is 
more is um, greater or equal to alpha or alpha squared, you say, including the square up there. Okay, so the whole thing is larger than four alpha square plus this one. Okay, um, so this one is larger than four alpha square but it converges to alpha square. So the whole thing, whole thing converges to alpha square and the old, the uh, four alpha square, excuse me. Let me. Make this clearer. We have four alpha square here. So the left-hand side converges towards four alpha square and the right-hand side is always larger than four alpha square. Larger or equal to four alpha square. Now the only way that the right-hand side converges to 4 alpha square is that omega m minus omega n converges to 0. Okay, so we have that omega m minus uh, wm uh, is a Cauchy sequence. Our space was a Hilbert space, so it's complete. So it converges. towards some y and uh, yeah converges towards some y and of course that uh, is the minimizer we, we, we look at and due to continuity of the norm we have that the norm of x minus y is alpha and is actually the minimum. Okay, so uh, we find that the definition which I have up here actually makes sense. Uh, the minimum is attained. The question is, is it unique? Well, uh, since I took that function wn um, just as uh, I wrote it here, so it's, it's just any sequence, oops, it's just any sequence. So uh, assume there were two minimizers, y1 and y2. Oops. Now uh, define wn, w2n as y1, w2n plus one, as y2, then uh, of course it satisfies the condition on w on uh, w. So that's um, that's a that's a permissible sequence. So we just uh, showed that this converges, right? Showed that it converges, and. Uh, if that converges, then the only thing we can get is y1 is equal to y2. So there is only one minimizer. And um, yeah, there's only one minimizer. So this is properly defined. OK, um, I say that this is um, the, um, that this y defines the orthogonal projection and let's test that. So we write our x as y plus y plus x minus y. And this here I define as z. Now um, let's look at the function f of lambda. that's defined as the norm of x plus um, oops, excuse me <laughs> sorry I had a phone call so um, define f of lambda so what we want to show is that um, that y, and it's clear that y is in M, 
closure of M, that's uh, how it was defined. And I say that X minus Y is in M perp. Okay, so the second thing uh, we have to show, and there's a standard way of doing that, which we'll be using throughout the lecture several times. So that's actually the reason why I'm presenting it here. Um, and um, we look at the function f of lambda, which is defined as the norm of x minus y plus lambda times v, two norm squared, for any v in M. Okay, so uh, this is the same as the norm of x minus y squared plus 2 lambda times the scalar product of x minus y and v plus lambda squared times the norm of v squared. Okay, so uh, now since uh, y minimizes that um, the, the distance x minus y, uh, it's clear that lambda, uh, that uh, f has a, a minimum at lambda equals zero. Okay, uh, because uh, y plus lambda times v, v would be uh, an element of m since m is a linear subspace. Okay, so that has a minimum at lambda equals to zero. So that means f prime, obviously that's differentiable. So f prime of zero should be zero. Now the derivative has something like two times scalar product of x minus y and v, and a lambda times uh, two, uh, two, um, two lambda tw tw uh, times the v norm, uh, the two norm of v. So with lambda equals to zero, th this means that the scalar product of x minus y and v must be zero. And uh, yeah, that means that uh, v x minus y uh, so and um, m was uh, v was arbitrary in m so x minus y is orthogonal on uh, on v for every v in m so x minus y is in m pop. okay and that's it so we for every x, just to add this up, we showed that every space x can be written, uh, uh, every Hilbert space x can be written as closure of m, orthogonal sum for with uh, m orthogonal, and uh, every x can be written as an element of m, of closure of m, which I will write as px plus x minus px, which is then in the orthogonal space. And this is, of course, the orthogonal projection. Oops. Okay, and uh, of course, we'll heavily make use of 